All right, so in this video, we're going to look at factoring when a is not equal to 1. Before we do that, let's refresh our memory on multiplying binomials. And so what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to use the distributive property. So I'm going to distribute that 3x into both things in the other parentheses. So 3x times x is 3x squared, and 3x times 2 is going to be 6x. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the 4. I'm going to distribute that into both things. So 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 2 is 8. So when I combine like terms, I've got 6x and 4x. That's going to be 10x. So this is going to be my final answer. Now one thing I want you to remember is the thing that we just got, this answer, this trinomial that we got, is the exact same thing as what we started with exact same thing. The only difference is it's not in factored form, but it's the same equation or the same expression we call it. All right, let's do the same thing with the second example. Distribute that 5x into both. So we get 10x squared and then plus 15x. And then we distribute that negative 7 into both. Negative 7 times 2x is going to be negative 14x. And negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. So combining like terms here, we get 10x squared plus 1x, it's 15 minus 14, and then minus 21. So once again, this is the exact same thing as what we started with. Uh, it's just written in expanded form instead of factored form. Okay, so the reason we did this is because what we're going to be talking about in this video is factoring, which is going the other way. So I'm basically giving you the answer. You have to tell me what was multiplied together. That's what factoring is doing. It's, it's going from the multiplied out trinomial to the things that were multiplied to get to that. So the way we're going to do this, and this is all going to be guess and check here. There are some ways to do this, and I'll talk about that at the end, but I'm not going to teach you a magic trick in this video, and I'll explain what I mean later. So all of these are factorable. All the examples I have in this video are factorable. So what that means, if we have 3x squared, the only way we can get that is if we have 3x times x. We're not going to be dealing with any decimals or fractions or anything. It's all going to be whole number stuff. So then we know that the two numbers that we're going to put in these boxes have to multiply up to negative 4. So our factors are going to be negative 1 and 4, 1 and negative 4, negative 2 and positive 2, and then that's it because if we switch those around, it's the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to plug stuff in and hope for the best and see what we get uh, when we multiply it out. So let's plug it in. Let's try the first one, negative 1 and 4. So negative 1 and 4. So when I multiply this out, we get 3x times 4 is 12x. And negative 1 times x is negative 1x. When I combine like terms, look what I get. I get 11x. Oh, shoot. That's not the same. It's super duper close. But do you notice how this is negative 11x? And this is positive 11x. So we're pretty darn close. We're just, we're not there. So obviously, this is, I mean, this was actually a pretty good guess off the bat, but it doesn't work. So maybe let's try switching them around. Instead of minus 1 on the left and plus 4 on the right, let's try doing 3x plus 4 and x minus 1 and see what happens there. So let's get rid of this stuff here. Uh, 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x, and 4 times x is 4x. So when I combine these, I get just 1x. So no, that's not right either. All right, so let's forget about that one. Get rid of some of this stuff here. There we go. All right, so uh, we can say we know the first one's wrong. Let's try the second one. So we'll do plus 1 minus 4. See if this gives us a negative 11x. All right, we've got 1x, 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. Combine those, 1x minus 12x is negative 11x. There we go. So on our 
third attempt, we found the factors. And so this that I'm putting in this orange box is our answer. Those are the factors, 3x plus 1 and x minus 4. Those are the factors that are, when we multiply them out, we get what we started with. All right, so there's our first example. And like I said, this is going to kind of be the procedure, but I'm going to talk to you about how to be smart about this. But basically, you're going to be doing guess and check until you are able to find the right factors. Okay, I've got a couple more examples here, and then we'll kind of summarize at the end. So let's start with this one. If we have 4x squared, there are a couple different ways that I can get 4x squared. One way is 4x times 1x. And another way is 2x times 2x. So what I think we should do is let's just list out the factors of 21. I'll get this out of the way here. And so the factors of 21 are 1 and 21 and 3 and 7. And so I know we're going to multiply up to negative 21, so that means that one of these has to be positive and one has to be negative. And so I'm going to show you one kind of trick rather than uh, assigning positive negative right away. We're, we're going to keep that until the end. So what we're going to do is let's start with 1 and 21. Let's put a 1 here and a 21 there. And I knew right off the bat this was going to be a terrible idea because 4x times 21 is going to be 84x. And that's nowhere near the negative 8 that we need to get to in the middle. So obviously this is wrong right off the bat. If we try switching it around and put 21 here and 1 there, we're still going to have 21x and then 4x. Even if I subtract those, I'm not going to get negative 8. So I know it's not 1 and 21. I can get rid of those right away. It might be 3 and 7. So let's try that. Let's try putting a 3 here and a 7 there. When I do that, 4x times 7 is 28x, and 3 times 1x is 3x. Even if I subtract those, I'm not at negative 8, so that's not going to work. Let's try switching those around. Let's try putting the 7 first and the 3 second. And I'll get rid of these. There we go. So 7 times 1 is going to be 7x, and 4x times 3 is 12x. If I subtract those, I get negative 5x. So that's not going to work either. So guess what we just figured out? That isn't, it's not 4x and 1x. We've tried all the different combinations. It's not going to be 4x and 1x. So it's got to be 2x and 2x. And let's be kind of smart about this. Let's just say we know it's not going to be 1 and 21. Because when you put a 21 here, 21 times 2 is 42. It's just, it's going to be way off. So it's got to be 3 and 7. Of course, it's the last one we guessed, right? But now we got to figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. So if we have 2x times 7, that's going to be 14x. And 3 times 2x is 6x. If I'm hoping to get negative 8x when I combine those like terms, that means I need a negative 14x and a positive 6x. Because we do, we do negative 14 plus 6, we get negative 8. So if I want to get negative 14x, that means that we have to have a negative 7. If I want to get plus 6x, we need to have a plus 3, because we're multiplying by that other 2x. So of course, with my guess and check, the very last one that I tried was the answer. But these are the factors of 4x squared minus 8x minus 21. All right, let's look at the next example. Let's see if we can get this done not on the last guess. So if we have 10x squared minus 49x plus 18, to get 10x squared, I've got a couple different options. It's either going to be 10x and 1x, or it's going to be 5x and 2x. So um, the other thing that we know is we know that we want the factors of 18. So 18 is 1 and 18. It's 2 and 9. It is 3 and 6. And so let's start with 
the 10x and the 1x and see if we can make any progress there. So let's try putting 1 here and 18 there. And right away, I mean, as you do more of these, you'll know that that's a, a really bad first choice because 10 times 18 is 180. We are trying to get negative 49, so not a smart first move there, Nelson. If we switch them around, uh, we're not going to get negative 49 either because if we put 18 here, that's 18, and put a 1 there, 18 plus 10 is not 49. So ruling that one out. Let's try 2 and 9. 2 and 9. This would be 90. That would be 2. Nope. And to be honest, I, it's not. I let's get away from this 10x and 1x because whatever we put, let's see. I'll, I'll make a white box here. Whatever we put in that box right there, the 10 is going to multiply by that. So even if we put a 3 there, that's still going to be 30, and then 6. So I'm thinking we should be focusing on the 5x and the 2x. So let's do that. Let's slide down to there. So if we do 1 and 18 again, once again, 5x times 18, that's going to be 50 plus 40. That's 90x. That is not close to negative 49. So let's, let's get rid of that option. And let's switch it around. I think that might work. Let's see. We put 18 here and 1 here. This would give us, let's see, 5x times 1 is 5x, 18 times 2 is 36x, now it's 41. You're close, but not quite. So it's not 18 and 1. Let's try 2 and 9. Let's see what happens there. Where are we going to be on the last guess again here? Let's see, 5x times 9 is 45x, and 2 times 2x is 4x. Look at that. We get, if these are both negative, we get negative 49x, and then when we multiply, we get positive 18. So it was almost the last guess, but it wasn't the last guess. So our factors are going to be 5x minus 2 and 2x minus 9. All right, so just to kind of quickly summarize here, you are going to force, um, let me see what I can do here. We'll do blue. We're going to force these first two terms, 10x and 1x, or 5x and 2x. And we know that it's going to be one of those options because we want to get 10x squared. That's the only way you can get 10x squared. And then we also said, well, we know that it's going to be 2 and 9, or it's going to be 1 and 18, or 3 and 6, because that has to add uh, multiply up to 18. So. That's why we're choosing the numbers that we're doing. All right, uh, the last last thing, there are algorithm step-by-step -step procedures. If you're interested, you can. it's called the AC method for factoring this. Um, if you've never done factoring by grouping, it's going to be pretty confusing. But if you can figure it out, great. Uh, you're welcome to do that. But I, I'm very hesitant to teach that method because uh, people will do it, and then they'll forget about it, and then they have to relearn it every single time, whereas guess and check really works every time um, you get good at it, and eventually you don't have to, to try every combination, and really your number sense gets really good with guess and check. So in this example, uh, to summarize, the x terms would have to multiply to give you 6x squared, so our options are going to be 3x and 2x or maybe 1x and 6x. So we've got a couple different combinations. The constant terms need to multiply to 3, so that means that oops, we would have 3 and 1, or 1 and 3, you know, maybe switched around. And then you try different combinations until you get positive 19x in the middle. All right. so. Unfortunately, this isn't something where it's just follow the step-by-step -step procedure like a recipe. It doesn't necessarily work like that. Uh, you do have to do some guessing and checking, but trust me, in the end, your number sense and your ability to do this will be a lot better if you focus on the guess and check.